So, anyways, uh, I mean, there was this weird thing going on last time I was here. I, I was having a nice sleep, and when I woke up, I was in this strange, haunted-like forest, surrounded by a bunch of, you know, uh, people I've never seen before, but good folk, good folk. I mean, there was this half-orc girl there named Candy, real charming person. There was this great big bloke there, uh... Named, uh, well, there was two of them, actually. There was this big bloke, uh, kind of old friend named Alexander, nice fella, a, a, a bit stone face. And then there was, uh, Einar, another one. He, he was also a bit stone face. Okay, there was about, about two peas in a pod there. Well, in any case, you know, he was there, and there was this, there was this nice, uh, bard lady, too, there as well, who, since Judas not online, I can't see the name. <laughs> and I don't remember. Uh, Eve. Eve. Evelyn. 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 Evelyn, yeah, the girl Evelyn, she, she was quite nice, and, but we all apparently woke up and had these strange dreams and found ourselves surrounded in this spooky ghost forest, surrounded by specters and creatures of tell you what, no idea what they are, but I tell you, we got through it. Well, uh, Einar decided to go investigate one of these trees, and well, out of the tree shot these like shadow-like creatures, and poor Einar just got nailed by it, and, it, and apparently their touch was like vicious because Einar had these big thick muscles and after a couple of times he looked like a deflated balloon a bit and like had trouble moving around. <laughs> but you know, we did take care of him. Uh, oddly enough, my little uh, little light fists were particularly effective against him and helped stuff. Woo-wee, good fight anyways. But then, after taking on those things, we came across another ghosty and this one uh, kind of made everybody dance. And, you know, I thought at first, like, oh, maybe people just want to dance with the ghost. But then I looked over at uh, poor Alexander and I'm like, hmm, you know what? I think there's something wrong here. And so I fun punched the ghost in the face. And next thing you know, more ghosts appeared and we got a big fight. I mean, Arnar, though, he did a hell of a thing with trapping up that ghosty and like, like these metal-like fire chains, bringing it down and... After that, we, you know, we moved on after killing the creatures and had a good time. And, you know, then we met this strange lady at this mansion, uh, the, the mirror, uh, the aspect of death or whatever. And apparently she used to be these things called like the sins and virtues. And apparently, and I have no idea how, but everybody here, including me, is one of these things. Now, we don't know what we each other are, but I tell you what, it'll be fun finding out. But we were taken in and uh, had a nice dinner and did, did some paintings and had some food. And we were told that we had to go kill some sort of necromancer that's causing issues back in the real world. Uh, well, I guess the other world. I guess this world is real as any other. I'm not going to be, you know, racist about it. But, you know, we were, we were told that we had to go kill some necromancer causing all kinds of hell and havoc. So, you know. Given the fact that we had nothing else to do and, you know, it seems like we're stuck here if we don't agree, we agreed to do this mission. <laughs> and uh, that kind of wraps everything up. Oh, we went to bed and I did share my training exercise with everybody. It's a hard one, though. Don't know if they're going to be able to handle it. <laughs> All right. That's good. Uh, but yes, you guys have uh, just pretty much going to the various rooms that have been set up and each one uh, it that you kind of stay uh, and seems to be fit, well fitted there's a lot of elegant uh, tapestries uh, the furnishings are quite uh, regal looking there's like gold um, inlay to some of the wood, um, to the posts of the bed, um, it just feels like you're living in luxury. Although there is this feeling of kind of emptiness there, as if it's an eerie feeling, as if you're being watched. Like, you know, if you were staying in, like, a haunted mansion, um, the air kind of feels slightly colder than 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 usual it's not extremely cold but there's just this really slight chill to it um, getting on the covers does keep you warm can't really feel it under there but it's just got this really itchy like spooky feeling in the back of your head while staying you're free to 
if you wish to talk to anyone else um, before the night rolls over, but I'll leave that to everyone else. I... Are we all in the same room? <laughs> no, it's you've each got your own room. Okay. It's just down this hallway. This really somewhat long hallway. I mean, given Marcus's personality, he'd probably knock on the on the on the door the wall behind his bed and go, Psst, "Hey, anybody else over there up?" <laughs> uh, Candy, you hear Marcus knocking on your door. Uh, not your door, but the wall. Through, through the wall, you said. Yeah. <gasps> yes. Hi. I have counted like. 125 cracks in the ceiling so far. I know there's... Whew, that's a lot of cracks. I mean, you, you're getting this weird kind of like spooky feeling in the back of your head, Candy, because I tell you what, I'm having a little trouble kind of resting down in here. Sweater if you are too, by any chance. Oh, no, not at all. I'm always happy when Scylla's around. There's nothing to be scared of with him here. But, oh, but you don't have one. Oh, dear, the little... Oh, that's right. You got your friend with you. That's a good comfort, I bet. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, it's nice knowing that you're there, though. I mean, I was a little worried. I mean, it's just kind of odd in here. I don't, I don't know what it is. Normally, I don't get creeped out or anything, but uh, it just seems a little little off. <laughs> Looking around the room, does it seem like there's anything creepier out? Uh, only a perception check. You don't really notice anything in the room that, that seems creepy. You just feel like there's something, but you don't know what. Hmm. She kind of looks around the room, squinting, holding her chin. Hmm. Nope, I don't see anything creepy. <laughs> No, he's not a big baby. I'm sure that the, he sees something creepy over in his. <laughs> so, oh, okay, well that, that's good. I mean, uh, hmm. Well, you know what? Maybe, maybe I just maybe I just need to meditate for a while. My master always said meditation can help. So I guess Marcus will try to meditate to try to get rid of the creeps. <laughs> How does meditation work? Oh wait, you never tried it. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll explain it through your rules. So basically, the main concept is, well, first you got to find yourself get in a comfortable position. You know, my master, usually we had our legs crossed and we had our our, our hands like over our chest and like a cross farm. And you got to close your eyes and empty your mind. Right? Some people find like a, a hum or a champ helps with that, like a um, um. There's dead silence and she falls asleep. <laughs> well, she's basically a natural. He says as she goes off and Marcus continues to meditate. <laughs> Anyone else? Alexandra is the type to do anything. This sucks. Huh? Uh, I want to socialize. <laughs> Probably just pray. Okay. To my lady. Um. Romeo D100. Okay. Make your prayer. Say pretty your much. Prayer. Yeah, pretty much just saying how I don't like it here that, um. <laughs> it's, it's like. Every abomination that I've seen and every everything in my power and my teachings has taught me to kill it, and I have to not do that because, you know, this is like another aspect of something that I don't like. This is out of my depth, and I want to just continue serving unto her and be like, that's my only goal in life. And if she wants me to continue with these people, then I will, but I don't want to. <laughs> rest of you uh, rest for the night and uh, it takes you a little bit longer just to try and get that nagging feeling out of your head and eventually you do and the night passes by the 
any troubles and you wake up the next morning fresh and ready for your day. Wonderful. Marcus comes out of his room kind of doing some somersaults to get himself in sh to as a warm-up. <laughs> like through the doorway? Yeah, just like through the doorway. <laughs> Gotta keep fit and limber. I know, you just see like... <laughs> uh, Marcus just somersault through the door as you open yours. <laughs> Alexander will just stare. I'm bored in you two. Um, good morning. You're quite energetic for the morning. I don't know what it is. I've been a bit of a morning person myself. It kind of rotates. I guess it's the sun. It kind of makes me feel revitalized. There's like barely any light coming in from the outside. I don't what? think there's a sun here. <laughs> well, it's I'm like I think light, you say that the sun is your shining personality. Hi, I'm here too. Oh, hey, Candy. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. When she said shining personality, she's looking at the others with this like bright, happy smile. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, uh, no, no worries, that's good. I, I say it's about breakfast time. I'd say I guess we got to get going then. Uh, everybody seen uh, Evelyn yet? She'll eventually come out of her room and just greet you all good morning. America just nods, gives her a nod, and gets it. Well, let's head down for breakfast. I'm hungry as heck. As you all make your way into the dining room, you see um, that there's just already food um, set up for you. Um, and Stumura kind of like, once again, there is quite a bit of food set out. Probably not as much as, as the night prior, but. Um, you have this like whole portion to to yourselves and then there's like half of that is pretty much for her so she's eating for like three people basically um just on her side of the table and she's just kind of like currently in the middle of taking like with her mouth full um just like this egg and just like this, this fried egg and just like putting it into her mouth for... morning Am I ever concerned you'll choke? No, no, it's fine, it's fine. And she swallows. So I mean, much delicious looking food. I know. I can't yeah. wait to tuck in. Feel free. Oh, thank it's, you. It's uh, not exactly the same as the night's. It's, uh, it's still good. I bet and Marcus will sit down and start making himself some breakfast. Alexander will do the same, but it's like he's doing it in like a very like uptight way where it's like he has like the little like napkin on his lap, like he has his like proper forks and knives and everything and it like you know. This seems to be almost normal for him. I just gotta do this gay because I have to, but Marcus will grab some like porridge or something, notice it's a little cold and just like light up his hands to warm it up. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> so there's like a bunch of food on the table, right? Yes. Just a whole it, bunch of assortments of different food. Does it look like there's pancakes? Yes. Kenny will immediately go for the pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it's just like this half um, stack of pancakes, about um, three inches tall. Um, just it, it seems like there's there's been a few taken off already the like the butter's just on the side um of the plate and like the maple syrup's been like taken um but this is that stack of flapjacks there marcus will see and there is, there is maple there is maple syrup though yes kenny will take some and just start drowning it <laughs> Got a bit of a sweet tooth there, eh, Candy? I mean, it sort of suits my name, doesn't it? It sure does. 
looks over at Einar and what's Einar eating? <laughs> Chorizo. <laughs> Chorizo. <laughs> Uh, yeah, whatever, whatever, like some eggs, cheese, bacon. Okay. More protein than than any. Alexandra actually just eats some waffles, <laughs> and like uh, you know, just some bowl of fruits and stuff like that. Just pretty yeah. basic, but like still pretty good. It's like a assortment of fruits, like milk, mm-hmm. and things like that, and cream. Um. Uh, as you're all kind of eating, she looks over towards you all. Uh, once again, food in her mouth. Um, so, sorry, swallows. Um, uh, for what you're doing uh, today, uh, for the foreseeable future, until you're done, just this little thing. Um, the necromancer. You'll. I'll be transporting to you, you to the outskirts of a town called Offset, uh, in Kastrofel. Um, there, there seems to be some necromancer who is using my name in vain, and I'm being alerted that he is doing so, and it's not sitting well with me. So I'd like for you to deal with him in whichever way you deem fit. It doesn't really matter to me. So the goal here is to stop the necromancer from using your name in vain, correct? Indeed. So it's not necessarily to, uh, how shall I put this delicately, uh, exacerbate his life? (laughs) Oh, that. Uh, no, you don't need to kill him. Just whichever way you need to do to just stop him from raising undead and in in my name, of course, and using them for cruel means. Mm-hmm. Hmm. But, oh. may I ask, though, hmm. um, am I still able to do my sacred duties as a paladin? You know, just, is is my lady aware of what's going on? I have no idea. Hmm. I think it's not, I don't think she's using your lady's name. I'm... Candy I'm... looks at you with her cheeks just like stuffed with food. She's like, oh, you have a lady? My goddess. <laughs> Marcus, I, you know. oh, wide-eyed stare. I didn't know you could take horses. I was about to lean into Candy and go, man, that, I gotta say, he aims high, doesn't he? <laughs> right? No, she... We are not, well, anything. I am just a servant to her. Candy holds up her hands placatingly. She's like, I have no right to judge. I mean, this sounds like a bit of an unhealthy relationship, but I suppose whatever works. (laughs) I... We are not romantically involved. I... I am nothing to her, but I am willing to sacrifice my life and everything I have for her. Oh, oh, I get it. One sided. <laughs> Leads into candy again. I think they're in the friend zone. Oh, oh, that poor guy. I know, right? <laughs> am I hearing this? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Knowing candy and Marcus, am... <laughs> probably. If. <laughs> If anyone could possibly even compare to her, it would be me, but still, I am not worthy of her. So, you're sort of like in this area where you got high confidence, but also really low confidence. He would tilt his head. Because you're still saying you're less than her, but you're saying that you're more in comparison to others. So it's sort of like this weird wishy-washy. Yes. Well, she is my divine goddess. She is everything. The goodness in the world and the light. Nothing can compare to her. <clears throat> Do you close your throat? That's how I feel about pancakes. They're pretty good, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Did we, did, oh, sorry, Demir, did you, did you want something? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, just be clear to throw that when she, when Alexander was talking about um, the goddess, like yeah, her demigoddess being uh, every. Well, I haven't even told them who who she was. Yeah, we don't know, so we're just having some fun with it. <laughs> well, in mm -hmm. any case, there, Demir, I guess uh, when you're ready to have us go now that. Uh, Marcus just kind of scratches his belly as he kind of like, Ooh, I feel pretty full right now. But I am wondering, though, is this for you that you're asking us to do this? Well, technically, yes. It's just something I'd like you to deal with. Of course, I'm... it's also on behalf of the town. They have issues with these undead. In your whole thing, Mr. Alexander, kind of like, the smart and the undead and such you were saying? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the whole thing. <laughs> Alexander actually looks pretty conflicted, like like he like there's there's something like like internal warfare going on in his mind. Y you, you look trouble. Is there a problem there, Mr. Alexander? I've worked with deities and demigoddesses before. I only answer to my deity. I'm sorry. I, I don't put my trust or faith into anyone else besides her. If she deems that it is my necessary to follow your orders, uh, then I will. I'm... Okay, but your demigoddess is I saw her, correct? I get the feeling. Yes. Anyways, um... Well, her whole thing is making sure that undead are purged. So, there you go. I'm pretty sure that doing this also follows whatever whatever she wants. I'm sure she'd be happily... She's probably more concerned that you actually destroy the necromancer than... Change his mind. Change his mind, yes. Honestly, I don't really care how you deal with him, but, um... Yeah, I think we'll play it by ear when we get there. I mean, maybe he's a reasonable man. Can I do an insight check to see if, like, what she's saying is going to be, like, chill, that there is a necromancer and there's actually, like, undone and stuff like that? Sure, yeah, we'll insight. <laughs> I don't know. She seems to be telling the truth. And we found out this what is, the dump stat is. Stat is. <laughs> no, this is. Mm, I literally put it in. Uh, this is like the big defining moment for him. He just doesn't. Well, Mr. Alexander, look at it this way. Whether you want to go take out this necromancer or not, we still got to get out of here, right? Yes. So, we go out and do it. I mean, worst case scenario. We don't do nothing because the person's fine. Best case scenario, you smite evil and your goddess will help you be happy that you killed some undead, right? But I'm being tasked by another divine deity. What but happened last time? How about if we task you then? Will that make you feel better? I'm sure if you ask your demigoddess to... See whether or not purging an undead is the right idea. I'm sure, sure. That's that fine. isn't my problem. I am completely fine with going to kill a necromancer and everything of the sort. It's just. I'm not exactly. Don't. I'm not trying to be rude or anything, uh, Demira, but the last time I did something like this, it didn't do well. And we were. You know, lied to. By a, another deity? I don't want to go in depth with it, but let's just say things happened and I took the short end of the stick. 
is the best way to put it. And I don't want that to happen again. All right. Well, I mean, I don't really know what else to say except that it's. <sighs> I mean, let's be honest. What, what? I mean, well, details. That's fine, but uh, I don't think there's any short end in the stick here. Don't think of it like we're being commanded or even requested. It's just a friendly, friendly advice, right? Maybe look at it like that. Who does that? But it's realistically, your battalion needs some help as well. You know, be able to lend some coin and all that sorts of thing. It's just somewhere to send you. Instead of literally anywhere in um, Chimera regions where you'll probably be, well, I suppose you'll look like you could pass off as Chimera, what do you think? Your abilities won't, and especially with, uh, does Alexander have his wings out at the moment? Well, he always has them out, he can't okay. put them away. Okay. And, uh, I suppose... Actually, those wings will be an issue. So, which is why Offset is a good place. Um, don't really think sending you anywhere else that's currently pressing at the moment would be good. It's just a small thing. You know what, Alexander? Just sorry. Uh, Mark is just going to lead in Alexander. Plus, you know what? Dimitri's been a really good host, and it'd be kind of rude to, you know, cut to refuse such a plain and easy request. <laughs> you don't want to be rude, do you? <laughs> I'm not trying to be rude. Well, then it's there's just no worries. a simple... <sighs> <sighs> like, you can tell that there's, like, very much, like, like, confliction in his eyes that he wants to do this, but there's just something almost holding him back against it. But he just grits his teeth and nods a little bit. What's holding you back? I'm, I'm going. It's fine. All right. If you want I'm me to do it, then sure. Well, if you're ready, I can teleport you there. All ready, man. You're ready too, right, Candy? I'm always ready. You done those pancakes? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Just stuff some in her Start <laughs> stuffing more. Oh, no, we're good to go. Uh, I know, you're all ready too, right? Of course. I haven't fought a necromancer before, or undead. You mean apart from the ones we fought outside? <laughs> yes, apart from those. <laughs> well, hell, you're an old hat at it then. I'm saying we're ready to go then. I mean, we got some practice. <laughs> Wonderful. And... Uh, she just snaps her fingers, and you s just see for a moment, um, like your 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 bodies start to just turn almost translucent as your vision blurs, and the world kind of spins, and you see yourself traveling through this blue um, tunnel, just kind of like the sea of energy, this bluish energy, um, just wrapped around as you travel through, um, almost through some sort of just magical um, aura-like tunnel. And your head spins as you appear, as your vision comes to you, and you appear in, in amidst this forest, just in this um, clearing. Um, there is a... As you look around, the trees are really oak trees and of various different kinds, a few birch... Um, as you look, there's this small little uh, path that leads out towards this clearing. And set up near this tree is this shrine. And the shrine kind of looks like it's kind of like reefed in, in this like shadow kind of uh, design where these little tendrils of, of uh, shadow kind of enrapture this um, small raven just kind of holding it in this like little bird bath um, seems to be made of grey stone stuff in it but you appear 
in this clearing. Candy, you are in the middle of grabbing pancakes, and you just have this like pancake uh, that's just like remain like that you grabbed at one, and and that it's just kind of come along with you. Um, Amazing. <laughs> and um, yeah, you're in the clearing right now. She'll also feed one to Sill and watch it just drop to the ground. <laughs> You dropped a pancake. Oh, no! I, I was trying to give it to Syl, but I think it's a bit too heavy for him. Tear a piece off. She looks at it in the dirt now. It's probably not worth what? eating anymore. <laughs> yeah, now it's kind of filthy. I don't want him to get sick. Please, a little dirt. It's good for the immune system. Does does that make sense to Candy? <laughs> uh, <laughs> can you check Candy's intelligence? You would want to catch a virus, would you? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Uh, like, y you would understand that probably not the best idea to eat that. <laughs> kind of purses her lips and thinks about that. Maybe not now, just in case he does get sick. I don't have anything to take care of him for. It. I suppose. Makes sense to me. But I mean, if you want to help yourself to it, go ahead, right ahead. Well, I am, fortunately, I am full, and teleportation makes me a little queasy. You teleport a lot, do you? No, it is a new discovery I've made about myself. Oh, fair enough. Do you need a baggie? I think I can hold it back for now. Thank you. <laughs> she gets two thumbs up. Leans in the candy. <laughs> Gotta admit, though, I imagine him when he spews, there is a lot to come out. <laughs> Ew, I don't want to think about that. Fair enough, but look at the size of him. <laughs> Well, in any case, I guess we better get going. Where is this here town? Looks around. You see a path leading away from this little shrine. It's kind of a, like opposite the clear uh, the shrine and just leads further west. Well, I think this is where we're supposed to be heading. It would seem so. What's the temperature like where we're at? Uh, temperate. It's about, uh, if you guys use Fahrenheit. Uh, um, it's warm. Not, like, annoying warm, but, like, a good warm. There's a nice breeze. Okay, okay. I dig it. Hmm, we must be pretty far south, further south than where I'm from. I suppose so, but uh, in any case, uh, anybody want to lead the way? Um, I will walk in the front. Oh, for I a know second! Not where we go. <laughs> cool, I'll, I'll stay in the middle, I'll, I'll keep an eye open in case there's anything around, though. Can't be too careful. Alexander already starts rocking forward. <laughs> that path is big enough for, like, any number of people. Like, if you wanted to walk all side by side, it's uh, <laughs> probably not that big. But I was about, about to say, we're, are we going to have a Wizard of Oz moment where we just link, link arms and skip down the road? <laughs> <laughs> My god. <laughs> um, so I assume Alexander and Ina are at the front. Yep, I'll take the middle and... It's Candy... 
also walking up to the front, or? And she was going second. Okay. Uh, all right. And Evelyn's just uh, behind. But, uh, as you all make your way forward, taking on this path, uh, you can hear the sound of birds. The, the smell of the air is quite crisp, and there's a lot of um, various, like, flowery scents that kind of waft over it. Honestly, a good um, break from from wherever you just were, where it kind of smelt dead, and there was just this, like, it just, there, there was this off smell to it. Other than the food, which smelled amazing. Um, but, and the mansion wasn't actually too bad either. But, um, like, the forest itself, it, yeah, there was just this dry, musky scent of, of like, lingering death around. But as you make your way through, um, Alexander and I know, roll me perception checks. I know, as you kind of make your way through, um, actually, and Alexander as well, as you're kind of uh, making your way through, uh, about 15 minutes later, you find just, um, like, off towards the south, um, you can hear some rustling just through the trees, and it, it's fairly loud, and you can kind of hear some um, humming of a woman. Mm. Hello there. I'll call out. So call out. Uh, you can hear a... Uh, 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 hello? Are you hiding in the trees? Why don't you come out to the road where I can see you? Uh, I'm not really hiding. I'm just looking. I'm foraging at the moment. She steps out from like just this, uh, a few trees that were in the way and eventually makes her way towards the um, group towards the path and you can saw it, and you can see this uh brunette head woman um she has these long elf ears poking out the side she's wearing this green like dark green um like dress uh, and she's got like this fur shawl over like her left shoulder currently carrying this um long uh staff as she makes her way over, and you can see that she's got like this kind of scar over her left eye uh, that kind of creaks over towards her nose. Uh, uh, he hello there. And. Greetings, I am Ionar, and you are. Absolusa. Very nice to meet you, Salute. Tell me, do you know where, what town are we trying to get to? Offset. Offset is? Uh, Offset's not too far away from here. It's about following along the roads. We actually make it back to the main road. And it's about an hour's journey. An hour? Okay. What are you Wait. foraging for out here? Um, just uh, some reagents and uh, different materials to use for apothecary. My apothecary. I see. What apothecary? Um, I own the apothecary in our town. Uh, it's called the Apothecary Slope. I handle anything, um, any healing, um, be done. Uh, potions, if, if people feel sick, that sort of stuff. We have heard there is a undead problem. Uh, yes. Mm. A few issues lately. Some people have gone out scouting, and it's only been recently about 
oh, it's two days ago that the, it's cropped up. But, um, they have north close to the mountain. Understood. Do you know anything about the man or individual that created? No, no. Don't really know anything. Sorry. It's fine. These things happen. Um, what, what are y'all doing in these parts? Well, uh, honestly, we're just kind of wandering around, looking around for stuff, right? Uh, we heard there was some trouble with some necromancer nearby, and we thought we'd uh, take a peek at it. Oh. Okay. You a necromancer? Me? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not a necromancer. Do I believe her? Uh, Marcus would yeah. also like to insight. <laughs> had a real insight. Oof. Uh, she, yeah, she seems to be telling the truth. She got an honest face. <laughs> mm, yeah, I can't see that being a necromancer. I suppose. She just kind of has this like weird, like just really <laughs> don't look like a necromancer. But <laughs> like the, it's like the first time she's ever been called that, and she's just really. Just... I guess necromancers generally wear black and like silver skull rings and stuff, don't they? <laughs> I'm. Is that true? Because they don't want to profile or anything. That's true, too. That's what I read back in books and stuff. I mean, I suppose anybody can... true? <laughs> <laughs> she just looks off to the side and is just like, Is that true, so? He doesn't know either. I suppose anyone could be a necromancer. I mean, technically, I could look like a necromancer, supposedly. <gasps> could... I be a necromancer and just not know it? Looks over at your shawl. Well, you, you got them skulls on your shawl. <laughs> she looks down. <laughs> I think they look cute. No, yeah, they're they're cute and all. I'm just saying, right? I mean, could you? Now, you know, I don't. I think you'd know it though if you were one. <laughs> hmm. Oh, I know. We just gotta kill something and then see if I can raise it back. <laughs> Don't mind them. <laughs> Seem rather exuberant about. They're quite hyper. Seemingly so. Oh, you the know other what? I'm very I, quiet too. I apologize, ma'am. We have not introduced ourselves. My name is Marcus. I'm Candy. It's nice to meet the both of you. And this is Sil. Um. <laughs> Is that the woman in the back there? No, no, right here. She just holds up her hand next to her. I don't see anything. That's because she's invisible. Oh. Silk is a boy. He's invisible. My mistake. Hard to tell. No, when Silk, he's... come back, come back, come back here. You see her like clasp her hands together. <laughs> The woman in the back is Evelyn. She is quiet too. Yeah, and, and this year is Alexander. He's a bit moody at the moment. Doesn't want to talk. Apparently has some kind of existential crisis. Uh, okay. Well, um, if you would like, I can lead you all towards the um, center of town. Uh, you were foraging, yes? Uh, yes, I was. Um, I... The men of my village weren't known to forage, but if you require assistance before we go to your town, I would be remiss if you were set aback by assisting. 
Oh, um, if, if you don't mind, um, I, that'd be lovely if you could help me. I have no issue. Well, hell, I'm Candy, sure it never Marcus, hurts to help. Scavenger hunt. Alright, well, um, there's a few things that I'm looking for. There, there's, uh, one in particular that might catch you off. So, there's, um, these mushrooms. Uh, there's, they're red with white spots. Those are the, the, the good ones that I need. But just don't be caught off by the ones that are white with red spots. They're poisonous and, uh, might make you touch them. I got it. Luckily, I wear gloves. And there's a variety of other, like, small herbs, and she'll list out all the minor ingredients of herbs that don't really have too much of an issue. Um, causing you difficulties, but just might be difficult to find. Paprika! <laughs> um, but yeah. I'll just list off, like, two or three other um, different herbs. Well, I guess we better, guess we can start looking for me. Uh, what do you say, Candy? Yep. All right. Uh, so I assume all three of you are looking. Yeah. Yes. Uh, individually me. or like together? If you're looking together, um, whoever, if you have uh, proficiency in survival, you can help or nature. Uh, I is a nature or survival? I have uh, proficiency in survival. I do not. I have proficiency in neither. Okay, well then, if you don't, you'll have to make your own check. And Candy, if you want to assist anyone, you're free to do so. But it's a survival check for the assistance. Uh. But we can do nature. Yeah, you can do nature. All right, I'm gonna do nature. Uh, we'll do I will. I'll assist whoever needs assistance. I, I, I'm doing uh, survival, so I guess you can assist me, Candy. She will assist you. I oh, snap. God, mushrooms. <laughs> 21. <laughs> okay. So, all three of you, you kind of spread out, and um, I know you go off in your own and, and look f around the area, and you manage to find some of the herbs. Um, that you're looking for, and you, you do spot this this cluster of um, different sorts of mushrooms, and you can see that it just like with they're fairly close to each other. One seems like why it's very hard to tell, but you look a little bit more closely, and you can see okay, that one is the white with red spots, and you grab the other one just to ensure that you don't get poisoned. Um, as you look around the area. Uh, let me go to the others uh, real quick. You two also managed sure. to find your all, your own um, set of various um, herbs uh, that were requested. Uh, you do manage to find uh, like Marcus. Uh, you do find that there's this spot of mushrooms in the corner here, like growing on this kind of fallen log. And then Candy kind of points out as she looks over towards it, as you're kind of looking, uh, calling out. For assistance, saying, no, 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 this one is the wrong one. That's the poisonous one. And you look around and you eventually find your another set of uh, mushroom uh, mushrooms that will red mushrooms with white spots that will uh, assist uh, the apothecary Salusa. Um, I know. As you as you currently rummaging around, you spot a kind of um, ghostly figure. There's like this mist in the forest as this um, like just kind of further away. There's this kind of like light 10 feet mist that kind of surrounds this tree and you can just see this like figure like this shadow standing within it. Hmm. I'll peer over towards it, and I will slowly pull Gyol out. Okay. 
and carefully approach, not knowing what this is. As you approach, you just see the figure just standing within the mist, just obscured. I see you. Who's there? No response. I will switch to Draconic. No response. Elvish. No response. Giant. No response. You all now know my languages. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. It hasn't I... budged or moved at all. Um since you've been Should to... I make can I make like a religion or an arcana on this thing? Um you can make a perception check. Perception. Looking at the figure, it seems like it, it it's not moving. It doesn't seem that it's just even realized that you're standing there. So it didn't notice me? It just doesn't even, like, the figure's just been standing still, basically. Um, kind of like, you can see the mist kind of alter it just slightly as if, if, if it's shimmering. Um, and just kind of like uh, moving side by side just very slightly. But other than that, it stood pretty much completely still. Okay. <laughs> well. I can't be surprised if it comes to attack me, so I'm going to walk up to it, supposedly. Surprised anyway. Okay. You walk to it. Um, how close are you getting to it? I'll get within about five feet of. Okay, you get within five feet of the mist, and it's still just standing there within, like within the the, and the the mist is like as you come across it, it's it's heavily obscured. It's just this like white crystalline mist, um, almost cold, and you can kind of feel this cold, um, like crystal. Um, energy, just kind of like, like uh, as an aura, away from this mist, just pressing against your skin. Are there any sticks around? Uh, like big yeah. sticks. Can I take one of the big sticks and kind of poke at it? Okay. As you take a big stick, about roughly five feet long, and, and go to poke at it. It just passes straight through. Hmm. Another ghost. Demir, is this you? Are you playing a prank on me? No response. Alright. I'll slowly step back. I'll tell the others about you. Perhaps they'll be interested. And, uh, I'll mark mentally where I saw this and go back to the... Okay. I'll eventually make your way back, uh, meeting up together. Salusa. Mm, yes. Are these oh. woods known to be haunted? Um... Not really. Interesting. Uh, what you guys want to come check this out with me? I think I found a ghost. Another one? Yes, I poked it with a stick and it did nothing. Does it want to dance too? I don't think it does. Aww. Maybe it. Maybe it'll react to dancing. I didn't think to try. Can't even start dancing. Well, Candy, if you wanted to dance, you gotta go to it. Here, come along. <laughs> <laughs> she dancing her way. Yep. She's doing the Fortnite dance. Oh my god. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Let me grab it. Oh lord. 
Uh, I knew it was going to be that one. I knew it was going to be that one. Well, Well, that's damn impressive. Thank you. I taught myself. Well, you were a great teacher. How do you not move but move in place? Lots of practice. Hmm. Well, as impressive as that is, it gets you no closer to this ghost. Does it not like it? She'll stop. No, we need to get to it first. It might like it. We're not oh, near the okay, ghost yet. <laughs> Alright, so I'll take them to where I saw the ghost and expect it to be gone. Okay. You eventually make your way over towards the area and you see the same shimmering mist and this kind of like shadowy figure just kind of stand there. That's the thing that I poked with a stick. Don't laugh at that. It's a very useful trick that I learned surviving out in the wilderness for a while. Poking things with a stick? Great. Well, I wasn't going to judge, but uh, so, so we see the same shadowy figure. Mm-hmm. Do you think it'll react a lot, maybe? Perhaps. I didn't want to attack it in case that made it hostile. You just see um, Salusa kind of look over towards it and pull out this kind of, like, um, uh, book from her side where it's kind of, like, latched on um, as she puts her basket down. And she kind of starts flipping through it. Eventually, she reaches to a page and she says, Oh, I knew it was this. Um, hmm. I don't want to trouble any of you um, about it, but um, that right there is a. a. um. God. It's a herb that, um, it, 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 as one of its uh, defense mechanisms, it emits this kind of cold mist around it and projects a shadowy image to ward off those that would try and well, pick it. It's a very strange thing for an herb to do. It's a... Uh, yeah, it, it's it's an interesting one. Very useful, though. Um, what kind of uses does this herb have? Uh, generally, cold magic um, for for cold um, potions, um, or things that illusions are also helpful. Uh, projecting mists, anything to do with those, it can greatly help or be an integral part of uh, their creation. Do you want it? Oh, yes, yes. Do you know how to pick it? Um, well... I assume it's not as simple as pluck it from the ground. Not necessarily. Um, you'll have to move through the actual mist itself. That will, um, hurt you a little bit. But, um, I, I, if, unless you're willing to do that, I don't wish you to, you know, put yourself in harm's way. Well. Whoops. Didn't mean to click that. I don't mind getting a little cold after all. I come from the north. Nice. Cool. Plus I have this <laughs> big bear cloak. Torbjorn's with me. That is a rather interesting cloak. Um, it's not something we see around here. Very well. I will go pluck the plant. Thank you. Alright. I will head to the mist, knowing it's no longer a ghost. <laughs> nor will it attack me. <laughs> okay. I will walk into it. 
Um, alrighty. As you make your way into the mist, uh, go ahead and roll me a constitution saving throw. Um, you take two points of uh, cold damage. Um, that's been reduced for original. Um, as you okay. just kind of make your way pushing through this kind of like cold mist that kind of frosts up towards, and you and you feel the tips of your fingertips, uh, tips of your fingers start to freeze as you like reach out and, and just gently. Um, now I need you to make a survival check. Oh no. Oh yeah. As you manage to like, you can see it's kind of latched onto the side of the tree. Kind of like a, a fungus, really. Um, and it's like kind of like this mushroom that's like grown up the um, the side of this tree, and you start to see. You can see that it's got the like this opening that starts to pour out this um, white mist from underneath uh, the actual mushroom, and there's like this uh, little spout um, shaped like a kind of like humanoid figure, portraying this like black kind of smoke outwards that like mixes into this um into the mist and as you kind of like carve away along the um side of the uh tree and and gather it up the, the mist starts to slowly dissipate um you gather some of the um, much of the fungus as you can in your hands and, and you bring it over um cold to touch all right as i come back i'll kind of like rub some of the frost out of his kind of stubbly beard. Hmm. Refreshing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, she kind of opens up her basket and moves like a lot of the herbs aside. It's a little um, like divider in it. Uh, just in here. Thank you. Uh, very well. I'll stick it in there. All right. Um, you've you've all been such wonderful help. Um, I might uh, when we send back give you something just for your trouble. Well, it's unnecessary, man, but I won't say no to a bit of a hand. Uh oh, oh, I, I insist. Well, okay. Right, well, um, I think I've got everything I need. Um, shall we? Let us. Head off. Let's go! Sounds like a plan! And you'll eventually make your way um, back along the road and head west um, as it kind of leads up uh, from from the southwest towards the north, back along this um, larger pathway. Eventually you reach it, it's about after about 10 minutes. And as you walk along main road towards the city uh, the town of Offset um, as you approach uh, just the outskirts of the town you can see that the entire um, town is just kind of built on this slant like this this hillside that's like on a on an angle um, where the south side is, is lower than the north by a considerable margin and all the houses are just kind of like built on this angle and it's like uneven um you see a lot of the paths they made are they've flattened out the road a little bit just so you can it's not so you're constantly on uneven road um all the buildings are, are kind of like have to have these foundations on the left hand side to support the weight uh, just from from the slanted uh hill it's a weird place to set up a town very weird. However, seems like it's doing doing well for itself. Uh, looks there's quite a few number of people currently outside. Just just from what you see, the the first few buildings entering from this road. As you make your way, you can see the farms further south um, flatten out. Um, more along the lines of like there's different segments. Um, so there's like an upper segment, there's like a small ledge, and then there's another one below that, and then another ledge below that. And it's just kind of like slowly, like, large steps towards further down. Um, and that kind of 
looks over towards you all. So, uh, this is Offset. I know it's not exactly a um, built like any other towns, but it, it's really nice here. Find well, I'll be quite frank, it's bigger than my home village. Oh, um... Not by much, though. I see. Well, um... I'll lead you towards my apothecary, and, uh, I'll set you up. I'm actually gonna lead, um, uh, the way through. Eventually, uh, you make your way over, uh, towards, uh, these buildings here. Uh, this area here. Just kind of past this large church, um, that's kind of, uh, pretty much taken up. Well, it seems to be the largest building here, actually. Uh, you can see that there's, uh, Just various stained glass windows, uh, just kind of surrounding the stone work um, masonry of this this building. So you make your way past along the road, kind of heading downwards down these steps, these stone steps of um, are leading further down. You make your way towards this um, smaller apothecary building. Um, where the sign says "Apothecary Slope," where you kind of see a few. Uh, images of herbs, and this is kind of like hillside uh, on the side. You make your way inside, and there is a variety of- the smell hits you. There's a, a, vari a variety of different herbs and scents in this in this room, like, just mixed. Um, somewhat overpowering, um, but um, as she kind of like puts a basket on the counter, and she, well, you can see there's a variety of different potions, um, just kind of set up. Um, as she grabs one off the shelf, and, uh, it's a red bottle, um, seems like a potion, and she hands it over to you. Um, this is a potion of healing. Hope it'll be useful for new dealing with the necromancy. That's what hmm. you hear. Oh yeah, Sh should I take that? Or should you take that, Einar? Hmm, flip a coin. Well, I mean, just saying, I'm, I move around pretty quick. If I can, I can feed it to someone probably easier. If things get that bad. Then you take it. Very good, I, I'll take it. Just... Uh, so it's just a standard I, potion I of healing? Yeah. I, I we got a good. potion of healing? Yep. Yeah. I put it in, uh... Put, putting in the monk's inventory because I can move fast enough to get to people. <laughs> I, I know Jube it's... 2.0. <laughs> I know it's not much, but, um... But with the herbs you've given me, I can easily make it back to four and that herb that you found I is quite the rarity. Interesting step you don't use it for the Are you intended to make them for sale? Um yes. Uh, I think it'll take me some time for that specific that you found. But um healing potions are for sale. Well, I wouldn't mind buying a few more of those in a little bit, perhaps. Is there a blacksmith in town? Uh, yes, there's a blacksmith. And what about an inn? Uh, yes, there's an inn too. Where are they? Uh, just uh, further down, there's, um, towards the water, uh, the inns, uh, just along the shore. Uh, looking out towards the sea. Does the blacksmith specialize in anything? Um. Hammers. Hammers. Uh, yes, uh, various smalls and 
um, hammers of the sorts. See that we have a, quite a bit of mining that goes on towards the north. That's kind of been halted due to the undead recently. Um, hammers and warpings. If you're looking for things to be useful, don't really have much in terms of magical weapon. Just different materials. Hmm. I was mostly curious. Oh, all right. I am a fellow smithy. I see. I, um, oh, I, I guess I could perhaps maybe thank you for asking. At any rate, you've been most helpful getting us to the, the town here. And answering a few questions. Yeah, you've been super duper great. <laughs> Very useful, ma'am. Well, if you ever need any potions or ingredients or this will know where to find I will keep you in mind, ma'am. First person we come to. Indeed, First. I... Uh believe we should get our broody friends here to the inn so they can reflect on whatever it is they need to reflect on he says as he kind of awkwardly eyes over towards Alexander uh, he looks towards you Just shrugs Meanwhile, Candy Marcus, we should go through the town and gather information, right? Oh, probably not a bad idea. I'm pretty good with people, so I'm sure I can get some help there. It's a helpful skill to have. Yeah, I believe so. Well, let's go looking around, see if we can find some information on this here uh, necromancer we are supposed to take care of. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure we can get plenty of good information. I'm not very good with people, but Syl is amazing. Right, Syl? He says right. I bet he is. So, uh, we will go into town and see if we can gather up some info. Okay. Get out of the apothecaries and... Uh... Where are you looking? I'm gonna do the blacksmith first. I don't know about the other two. They can, they can take some time because I feel like I've been uh, eating up a lot of the RP. Probably head towards the. Uh... Oh, we're probably over there. Marcus thinks the best place to gather info for good sub gossip is either the local inn or the uh, marketplace. Okay. Well, you're currently in the marketplace district. You see a variety of different shops, just kind of like. Down, um, leading down these staircases towards the west, um, and also within this this area as well, further down. Okay. Well, I, I guess Marcus will head down towards uh, see if there's any kind of like uh, in, in the market district, any kind of interesting shop that may or may not have a bunch of people around it. Okay. Um. As you make your way down, um, you don't really see that there's there's um, a bunch of people any, gathering out in any specific shop. You do see a few stalls just kind of set up along the sides of the road um, where the hill kind of descends down and like where the, the flat pavement path has been built across just to layer off each section. Each section. Uh, various like meat stalls and fruits and vegetables, a variety of different that. Uh, You know, kind of look around, trying to get a feel for the area after a while. See if there's anybody who, uh, it seems like they've been having any issues or problems, possibly. Uh, okay. Roll me a perception check. I can do that. Okay. You do see, um, one stall. Uh, there seems to be a, um, kind of like this 
this uh like fisherman looking fellow he's got like this um uh, band blue bandana tied up around the the his head um and you you see him like kind of yelling out towards this um uh, young boy who's currently running away with like this fish in his hands and he's just, uh, like standing behind the stall and he's he's starting to walk around and he's like hey hey get back here so uh, so I see a little urchin running off with a fish, is what you're saying? Yeah. Marcus will jog up alongside the kid, because I can outpace him easily. Pretty much. <laughs> he, he, he seems like he's sprinting as hard as he can. You just pretty much zoom straight down. And you, like, what are you doing as you catch up to him? Are you juggling alongside him? Yeah, I'm just jogging alongside him and just go turn and go, You know what, kid? It's not the best thing to what? steal. You know that, right? <laughs> He kind of like sees you coming out of nowhere, like kind of like pulls away off to the side, stumbles a little, and just kind of comes to a stop. Ah, uh, um, hi. Well, hey, friend. I'm, I'm just saying that. I mean, you don't want to steal there, my friend. It's a little extreme, don't you uh, think? Uh, um, I did. <laughs> it's. I paid for it. I'm pretty sure I heard the man say that uh, you were a thief. Now, I'm not one to judge, friend. Uh, I know it's hard to get by in life, and you might be having issues right now, but there are better ways to do things. Uh, Roll me a persuasion joke. <laughs> not proficient in these. <laughs> I'm probably going to do terrible, though. Uh... Oh, 19. <laughs> um... He kind of looks up, uh, towards you, like up at you, and he's, he's kind of got like this fish in his hand as he kind of droops his head down. Um, the, the, the... <sighs> My family's not doing too good because of all the stuff happening. That People are saying there's bad stuff happening in the forests. Um, and my family's not doing too good with food at the moment because of everything that's going on so I, I just he doesn't seem like he needed it he has a lot of it Mar marcus is just going to uh kneel down next to the kid and kind of ruffle his hair it's like now listen kid there ain't nothing wrong with taking care of your family and there ain't nothing wrong with honestly uh stealing to survive when necessary but i'm telling you right now the best thing you can do is try to get by you don't have any friends or family. Where do you live, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I, I live further down south. Um, just over that way. And he points towards, um, you guys, uh, you can see the map, correct? Yeah. Well, I'll yeah. tell you what. Oh. <laughs> yeah, towards yeah. this direction here. Okay. I'll tell you what. I know you're in a hard time, and I understand that. I used to be in a hard time when I was a kid, too, at one point. But I'll tell you what, better to accept the hand, of the help of a, better to accept a friend's help than to, you know, go and laugh a crime. Tell you what, let's head back to that fisherman and I'm going to straighten things out, okay? Oh, oh, okay. And he just kind of nervously begins, like he waits for you to walk towards the stall and to follow up behind you. Yeah. Just kind of like standing no. behind your shadow. Yeah, as I do, so I walk up to the fisherman. My good sir, I believe there was a mistake here. Uh, a mistake here? I, I don't think there's a mistake here at all. I see that oh, young no, boy. Oh, no, no, no. You see, this young boy here screwed up here. He was supposed to buy me two dozen fish, and I put two gold on the coin on the table. And he forgot the change. <laughs> Roll me a deception check. Not my specialty, but something uh ten. Um, I don't think that's how it went. Actually, I th I saw you run up towards them, and you seemed like you were having a bit of a teaching them a lesson, not in that kind of sense, but you know. Giving them a warning and all that sorts of things. Listen, I know times are hard, but it's no use stealing. 
Well, I understand that. And I was trying to convince him of that very same thing. As I said, I'm just here to make sure things are going. But I do would like to buy some fish for him and his family. Two golds worth. Two golds worth. All right. Kind of like... Two golds worth is a lot. I know. Um, Marcus is he's uh, born in a family. That's why I said two like, dozen fish and put in two uh, gold. <laughs> he's just kind of like it, it, it's pretty much half his his like, uh, uh, well, pretty much what's laid out on this uh, on the small little stall at the moment. He's just kind of segmented like half of them or and um, moved them to one side. All right. Uh, a basket. I mean, puts a grabs a basket and, and like this kind of like wooden basket as he puts all the fish in, hands it over towards you. Two goats worth of fish. Thank you, friend. I do appreciate that. Thank you for your, you know, just helping this, helping me out. No worries, Maybe. friend. Like I said, the world needs people to help out and work their best. Indeed. I'll tell you it's what. Yeah. By the way, Sonnet, what's your name? Uh, the kid. The kid, yep. Yeah. Um, uh, Paolo. Well, Paolo, it is a pleasure to meet you. My name is Marcus, and I'm gonna shake, reach my hand out to shake. Uh, he slowly reaches his hand out, just kind of nervously towards you to shake your hand. Tell you what, Pablo, let's head down to your family and give them this food so we can get yourselves all ready and happy to go on Tell you what, pay the kindness in return that what you can't eat, share with those who need it, right? I, I suppose. Th thank you. Of course, and I will carry the basket and walk him back home. <laughs> Marcus is such an anime protag. <laughs> <laughs> well, he does do 100 sit-ups and 100 push-ups and 100 squats every day as well, but... <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Candy, what are you doing while this is all happening? So, just for clarification, because I was going to use Marcus's time to kind of figure out the specific of what we're looking but he chased a kid, so what? <laughs> <laughs> um, specifically, like, information, what you're looking for? Yeah. Um, something to do with the undead whatever is it seems like um there's things happening towards the north between the road um uh, between the town here and the mountain and currently the road north uh is being cut off um and then there's there's starting to cause issues with uh mining families okay is there a Morgan town? Uh, yes. Be on the, the outskirts towards the north. Candy will go to the morgue. Okay. You make your way towards the uh, north side of town where it kind of levels off. Um, and it's no longer like on this kind of like whole side and it's um, thickened trees and everything. Um, you make your way towards this kind of like small stone cottage alongside the cemetery. Um, and you can see that the it, there's kind of like this side staircase that leads um, down the side of the uh, the cottage. Uh, leads into this another uh, wooden door that kind of leads like what, what would be the basement to this um, cottage. Uh, if there, so the front entrance is open. Um, there's a wooden door there. Doesn't look like it's. Well, the the door's not open, but she will knock. Okay. Um, give it a knock, and after a few moments, um, you hear a voice. This kind of like old elderly man kind of call out. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. As you see like um as the door opens you see this like um kind of older gentleman probably about in his 50s or 60s um he's got these like a gray beard um 
It's shorter fellow with um, this like long walking cane, this gnarled wooden stick. Um, he's wearing these like kind of simple commoners garments. Um, so he looks over towards you. He's got like this this one spectacle over uh, his right eye. Looks over towards you. I, what do you need? Hi, my name is Candy, and I'm here to actually look for a bit of information to perhaps take what care of. What name it. is that? It's my name. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I'm looking into information to hopefully take care of the issues that are going on around the town. So, I have some questions for you if you don't mind answering. Okay. What do you need answering? So, within the past, I don't know, a few days or week, how many bodies have come in that you had to take care of? Uh, mm, and you just kind of see him, like, squint a little. Like, pull out his hands and start to count. Eh, uh, a little bit more than usual. Do you know where they were picked up from? Oh, well, they, they kind of made their way up from the north. They're closer towards the north. Mm hmm. And. Were there anything similar or odd about each of their bodies, or the recent ones? Um, no, no. Uh, I, I guess claw marks, I suppose, and yeah, claw marks. Claw marks. Ooh. Okay. Um. Like How... fingernail claws, like if, if someone was trying to just, like, grabby hands, and he just makes a weird grabby hands motion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, um, and I suppose then, has there been any other things that seem strange or off about the body? Um... Uh... They seem to be decomposing faster than usual. Which is strange. Hmm. And are these bodies that you're still sort of working on, or have they all been um, buried and whatnot? They're, they've been buried, and I've been hearing that there's been issues lately, so I've, I've been making sure to... Unfortunately, having to cut off their heads. But, uh, you have you gotta take precautions. Okay, okay. The one out town to be filled with zombies and stuff like that. What, wait, what was that? Don't want our towns to be filled with zombies and stuff like that. Yes, of course, of course. And you found that chopping off the head worked? I don't know. Quite so far. So is it that you chopped off the head and then put their bodies into caskets? Yes. And where are these caskets? Don't tell anyone. Shh. I'm, I'm sorry? Don't tell you anyone that I've chopped their heads off. I don't think anyone would like that. But it's oh, to be Oh, don't bad. worry, I won't. Uh, caskets outside the cemetery. Oh, just over there. Points towards the left behind him. Oh, thank you so much. Do you mind if I go check them out? Oh, you mean the ones, that, like, above ground that aren't buried? There are some above ground? No. No. Buried. I would like to look at those ones. Th there's no, there's no, you want to look at the buried ones? You said that there's some that weren't buried. No, th there's no buried ones. <laughs> and... <laughs> Does it look like his gaze is like shifting somewhere in like any particular direction? Um, roll me an insight check. Uh oh. Yeah. Doesn't look like it. He seems hmm. like slightly senile. Looking over this place that he works, how run down does it look? Uh, it looks... Uh, 
doesn't really look run down. Looks decently kept. Sir, do you live here? Yes! Hmm. And have you ever thought about maybe, I don't know, decorating the place a bit, really fancying it up? It must be a little sort of sad and dreary to always have to work on corpses all the time, right? What kind of decorations? Oh, I don't know, flowers, or a nice little white picket fence, or something of the sort. I've got a fence in stone. What about flowers? I don't know. Can't be bothered picking flowers. It's unless you want to pick flowers for me. I don't mind doing that. Sure. Go and some. perhaps maybe to get some really, really nice flowers, and she'll uh go through her bag and hold uh hold five gold coin. His eyes just kind of widen as he looks over towards her. What's I'll this? Uh, what, what? Hmm? If you don't mind showing me these, um, above-ground ones that you talked about, I would be more than happy to share this with you. I said there's no above- You cut out. No, no, he, 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 he cut out. He just kind of stopped. Um... She puts down six gold coins. Um, two more to make eight. He's just kind of like, uh, I promise it, I won't tell anyone. Just like I won't tell anyone about the head thing. He just go ahead and roll me a persuasion check. Okay. Fuck. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Give me a moment. I'll I'll, I'll get an above ground one. <laughs> he begins walking towards the cemetery. Towards the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Grabs a shovel. Starts making his way towards one of the freshly, like, dug, um, graves. And just starts shoveling into the dirt. And oh, no. digging. And he's, he's currently digging out a casket. As he's doing that, looking into the house that he was in, do I see anything? The... You're looking in? No, it seems like a house, like, a living, um, you see, like, the, the kitchen and the living room and... Everything is kind of set up. Some places are like kind of neat and tidy, other places a little bit messy, but um, it seems like a normal house. And you said that there was like a door to a basement somewhere? Yeah, there's a staircase just like out the front uh, in the corner, and it leads down to a another basement door. While he's busy focusing on digging out a grave, since graves are pretty deep and that takes some time, can she make her way over to... Uh, over to the downstairs part? Yeah. Uh, yes, you can creep your way down. Uh, roll me a stealth check. Oh god. My stats are strength and con, guys. Oof, not even your dex, eh? <laughs> Oof! <laughs> okay. Doesn't seem He's old. Creep Maybe down. he's unnoticed. He now won. He he net one. Oh, oh, he net one? Okay. He's still busy. Oh, God. Alright, so... Checking the door, does it seem locked? Yep. Hmm. Use your strength. Uh, yeah, can she... Oh, God, can she... Try to force the door open? Uh, yeah. Or actually, a way that's quieter, can she... Is it like a door knob or handle, or... Or is it like a lock, uh, like a padlock? It is, it is, um, it is a padlock. Yank it it's off. It's a padlock? <laughs> yeah. yeah, she'll try to yank it off. Okay, roll me a strength check. Wait, strength or athletics? Strength. Okay. Rage. 
Oh. <laughs> oh, right. Rage is a thing. Sorry. Is that too late? Yeah, it's too late. As you're just trying to tug at the um the lock, the door kind of like rumbles a little as you're trying to tug at the lock, and it it's not budging. Mm, she will try to push the door open. Okay. And this time I will rage. Okay, make me a structure. This is my first time doing our barbarian. So with advantage? It's with advantage, yep. Okay, as you ram into the door and it busts open, the lock kind of like flies off the hinge um, as the door kind of sways outwards, hitting the the back stone wall and kind of splinters a little. Does she hear the man running over? Uh, no, he, he's, he's on an out one. Moment. Oh yeah, I uh, forgot. <laughs> make him another. Make him another roll. Uh, nope. Does not notice. Okay. Looking in, what's around? Uh, looking around, it seems like the, it's morgue preparations. Like so, so stuff to like um, handle bodies. You see various like white tops to kind of wrap the bodies and um, the examiner's table, various tools, um, scalpels, things like that, um, and various um, pastes and things like that, just kind of stacked up on shelves. Um, there's a uh, kind of like a crematorium in the back um, where there's just like this, this kind of like uh, kind of like a pizza oven looking um like hole in the wall uh, nobody is in this room either is there anything that looks off or out of place uh roll me a perception check uh, okay um looking around and just kind of like doing a, a real like decently good scan of the area, there doesn't seem to be anything out of place. Hmm. She will put down two gold on a nearby table as apology for the (laughs) Let me take that off. Uh, Alright, alright. And then she will make her way back up um this is the man st- I mean, I was get. he's probably still busy digging. He's, he's still digging, yeah. Mm, she'll go and walk into the house next. Okay. Does there seem to be anything odd in the house? Uh, let me put a picture. Oh, God. Nope. Looks funny here. She will step back outside. Uh, looking around the vicinity, does there look like there's anything else? Um, not really. The the rest of the area just looks fine. There's a few diff like small um boxes just like near the side of the house towards the cemetery, but that's like where he's like uh, his area is at. Um, other than that, nothing really else. Walking around the house, is there anything in the back? Um, just another, like, small box. A box? Yeah, like, um, it, it's, like, a small, like, wooden chest. Um, not, like, an ornate one, just kind of, like, a basic wooden flip-open box. Can she see what's inside? Uh, you flip it open and it just seems to be a bunch of, like, various tools to, like, mend the wall. Uh, the wooden fence. Uh, not the wooden, the stone fence. Hmm. Um. Mm. What else? Um. Looking. 
walking back down to the place where she broke open the door, does it look like there's scratch? Well, no, you no, she already perceived down there. She didn't see that. Um, never mind. Um, walking over to where the guy is digging, she okay. will look at the gravestone of the grave he's in front of. Yep. What's that say? Um, it's kind of like. It's been placed on the floor at this point. It was like this wooden like cross, and just been placed face down on uh, beside him. Oh, uh, uh, hi, uh, um, um. hey, hey, who's this person? Ah, uh, hold on. And he goes, reaches towards the um, wooden marker, flips it over. Wendy. Was Wendy one of the ones with the weird scratches? Yes, yeah, yes, yes, she was. I see. Do you need help? Um, sure. Uh, don't, don't tell anyone I'm doing this. <clears throat> I won't tell anyone. Okay. Help him. Uh, eventually shovel the rest of the um, dead off. and He was pretty much close to finishing, and you take the casket out. So does it look like the head's been chopped off? Um, as he kind of unwraps top, uh, yes, you can see, like, that the head's pretty much been severed from the body. Uh, can she see where these scratch marks are? Um, as you pull the rest of the top away, um, and he just kind of points out, Ah, so over here, there's scratch marker over here, and you can see, like, there's, it looks like fingernails just kind of dragged along the side of, like, her forearm. Um, you see more along her thigh. Uh, Does it look like that's what killed her? Uh, seemingly so. Or at least blood loss. Hmm. Is there anything else weird about the scratch mark? Um, not really. Hmm. Looking. Oh, checking the uh, back, the p top part of the casket that had been facing towards her body. Does it look like there's any th scratches on it? Nope. Hmm. Okay, she will carefully set it back down and lightly pat the top and say, Sorry for disturbing your rest. And move away. And just kind of think for a moment. So, um, the gold? Oh, right, of course, here. She'll hand him eight gold. Just kind of, like, he, he, there's, there's a bit of guilt on his face, so he just kind of pockets the gold. Hmm. Well, I guess if you come across anything else, such as, um, Anything that you think could help, let me know, and I can, I'd be more than willing to give you, uh, and she counts out 20 gold, and just like, I'll give you this. All right, have a good day! Okay. She just kind of watches you and waves at you as, as, as you leave. She's gonna pretend to leave. Okay. He's just gonna continue to shovel the, uh, rest of the, um... Uh, as he kind of like prepares everything and r rolls the top back up over the woman and closes the lid of the casket, puts it back in the grave and begins covering up with dirt. He just stands there for a moment. Uh, roll me a stealth check. Oh god. <laughs> um. Let me roll. Ah. Uh, I see you over there. What time of day is it? It's about uh about early morning still. It's about only ten AM. Okay. Oh, sorry, I saw a really pretty bird and I couldn't help but stop and stare. Have a good rest of your day. Uh, and she'll walk away. Looks back down on the grave. Um continue shoveling. <laughs> While walking away, Kenny will look off to the... Yeah, that was really suspicious, wasn't it? Well, we'll have to tell the others. I think he knows something he's not saying. 
All right, let's go. And she'll skip on ahead. Okay. I know. What are you doing? Heading to the blacksmith. Okay. You make your way over towards the blacksmith. Um, you can see this um, kind of gruff... Um, <laughs> this uh, gruff uh, Jabali man with this black beard, his bald head uh, with a uh, blacksmith apron over on. Um, he's currently sitting by behind the counter at the moment, um, just kind of like moving some parchments across. Uh, good day, good day. Take a uh, deep whiff. Uh, what metal are you using here? Iron. Mostly. Steel. Iron mostly? Let's see. I heard you have some mines to the north. Is that true? Yes, yes, we have some. Currently, not really getting any materials for the past two days, but um. What sort of materials do you find up there? Uh, depends, really. Uh, with the odd case of um. Uh, uh, now I need to go find. Is it? Uh, um, there's a variety of different metals, copper, brass, uh, or, or grading brass, um, uh, I'm blanking out on metals, um, let me get, there's a specific metal that I need to find. Um, Orichalcrum, also, in these, uh, mountains. Orichalcrum? Mm hmm Never heard of that. What is it? It's, uh, it's somewhat common, um, uh, metal, uh, in terms of, compared to various other, uh, rarer metals, but, um, it's much rarer than, you know, iron. It's stronger sturdier and um, often helps with creating weapons and armor got a few metal a uh, few aracalcum hammers and war picks here hmm no matter if i take a look at one yeah, feel free he kind of makes his way gestures over towards a uh, weapons rack that kind of have these um these various hammers and, and war picks and the the blades themselves or the, the um, actual weapon the metal part um, they, it seems to have this kind of like dark green kind of uh, kind of like this grayish dark green coloring to it darkish green coloring to it huh yeah it's like a gray it's like a dark gray green hmm not particularly a fan of the coloration, but seems strong. That's very useful. Definitely useful for people who want to do a little bit of extra uh, damage when they fight. Tell me, how much do one of these Oracolcrum weapons sell for? Perhaps a hammer? It's about um, 150 extra gold on the usual price. Well, that's quite a bit. Mm, yeah. It's good metal, though. Uh, would I be able to discern how much stronger it would be? Um, go ahead. Do you have Smith tools? I do. Uh, go ahead and make us me a Smith tools check. I gotta check one thing though, really quick. That you added your double proficiency. Yeah, my proficiency will be doubled. With the elder. Uh, 
You can add that to your sheet, you know, eh, Nano? Yep, I uh, just threw it in expertise. Yep. All right. Okay. Um, with that, uh, you can see that weapons created with them uh, seem to do like a bit of a bit of extra damage. There's a bit more like a finer tuned Oops, sorry. Um, edge, and like the edges of the the wall pick is, is much sharper than than you feel. You can like feel this like a little slight pinprick um this kind of draws blood is just just from touching it um and the weight of the the hammers actually feels like there's there's a bit more heaviness to them um, out of character uh mm. they deal two extra damage of the weapons damage type interesting okay this, this is quite a interesting metal tell me do you have any here that you haven't worked with yet um, well, I have, uh, one batch left, but I've uh, been reserving it for, just in case. In case of what? Uh, well, currently not getting any more material shipments from the north, so. In case of a rainy day? In case of a request, I suppose. You're requesting something? Mm. Yes and no. You see, I'm a fellow craftsman. I've not worked with this metal before. I was wondering if you might indulge me in a little competition. Mm. Competition? I, back in my hometown, a smiths would gather once, once a month. Spend a day smithing, and at the end of the day, the best craftsman would win. Interesting. Yes. It's a little bit of the culture from back home. Not really seen much, but figured I might offer the opportunity to you. Okay. Why don't we say we do this and the winner gets the batch of the Oracolcrum? Hmm? Give me a persuasion check. Looks at you for a moment. Mm. All right. I love a good challenge. That's the kind of man I'd like to see. What are we craft? Hmm. Your specialties are hammers, yes? Mm-hmm. Why don't we craft some hammers, then? Simple iron hammer? Simple iron hammer. Very well. Uh, we should get someone to judge these hammers, though. Is there anyone of the guard here, or perhaps someone that purchases your wares uh, quite often to judge? I ask the guard, Captain. Yes, yes. Let's go fetch him and... Have a proper smith off. All right. I'll be forged in fire, friend. Very well. Uh, uh, I don't think he probably wants to be disturbed right now. We'll probably get him once we've done. Fair enough. Fair enough. Very well. Let's, uh,. Grab a few pounds of iron ore and get to work. Very well, I shall do the same. Gets off uh, from his uh, from behind the counter and uh, starts gathering his materials. All right, oh. I will do the same. Okay. Uh, while you're doing that, Marcus, uh, Paulo eventually leads you towards a quaint house just kind of like in the middle of the um the like district here and there's a, the, it's a small house and he kind of leads you through um towards the door and he makes his way inside and you see like this um woman with like orange hair um just kind of flowing down to the to the mid uh middle of her back she kind of whirls around she's like oh pa uh, um 
uh, well, welcome. Um, who's this? Um, this is the man who bought all our fish for us. N name's Marcus. Name, uh, pleasure to meet you. I was hoping to go around gathering some information, but here in town's been having some troubles. Uh, yes, we've, it's, um, my husband works in the mines, and since he's been getting no work, it's starting to be a bit of an issue. And I, what happened? Oh, nothing happened. Just I just saw this boy need, and I figured he said that you and your family were having a bit of strife, so I figured I'd do my charitable duty and uh, help a lot things along here. I, she really didn't need to. Is that all for us? Well, I figured uh, it'd only be kind if you know any other people might be in strife around these parts. You can always share it with them as well. Yes, yes. I, I, I know I knew a few other mining families. I don't think we can eat all this fish in a few days. Um, but... well, you, there's a secret to that. You know, if you smoke it right, it'll last weeks. <laughs> oh. True, true. Um, <laughs> But the, Thank you, I guess. Oh, you're very welcome, man. I, I don't suppose you mind if I uh, ask some questions about... You, you said your your husband is a miner, and there's been issues with the mine? Uh, yes, yes. There's been issues with the mine. Um, uh, may I ask any details on these issues in the mine? Is it like... Um, well, well, the road's been closed off um, due to... What is said to be those undead in the area? So, currently, no one's allowed to head further north due to, you know, there being attacks and things of that nature. Which means there's a lot of our imports, a lot of our creations, and everything that we sell here comes from those mines, along with the fish um, yes. in the harbor. So. Yes. Yeah, it's proven quite difficult for a lot of mining families at the moment, especially ones that are currently trying to live off day by day. True. I see. I understand your strife, ma'am. I had issues when I was a child as well with shortages. So there have been, like, attacks on people by these undead keeping the roads unsafe then. And, and indeed, yes. Well, that don't sound very neighborly. I don't suppose you know any more specifics, uh... Or anyone I might frequent who would know more specifics about the locale of this person that may or may not be causing you people such strife. Um, the locale of what, what person? Well, I mean, who's ever behind these undead attacks is what I mean, man. Oh, you think someone's behind these attacks? Like, a person's doing this? Well, are undead common otherwise, ma'am? I... Okay, I, I guess this should be a GM question, but are do undead just naturally appear, or is it like usually assumed a necromancer is involved? I mean, uh, there there are times that they can naturally appear. Um, it just seems like she has no idea at all on on the matter. Oh, um, fair enough, fair enough. But it's rare that they do. Usually, it is necromancers, but she just has never heard about this before. I see. I might have made a wrong assumption. I just assumed that with the undead minions going around talking people, the odds were that it was behind a necromantic nature or something sort. Uh, Though then again, I might be misinformed. I, I, this is the first I've ever heard of things. It's quite terrifying, to, to be honest. Um, if you need any more information, I, I think it would probably be best to ask the uh, Countess. Oh, there is a countess around here. Well, that is useful information to have. I'm very thankful for that. Uh, you're most certainly welcome. That's the least I can do. Oh, it is no worse, you. I'll, I'll bend down by the boy, too, and kind of tap him on the shoulder. By the way, your son is showing some uh, strife and get to. I believe he is capable of doing many great things with his life. Oh, thank you. He's, he's just trying to do his best to help. I think he usually tries to mean well. 
she kind of makes her way over and ruffles her. Well, I can tell you there is nothing more important in this life than striving and doing your best. Well, by the way, son, what is it that you like to do? Um, I, um, I, I, I like to shoot, shoot rocks at things. I, I made a nice sling, and he pulls out this like a sling. Uh, that's kind of like, it's a decently well crafted sling. Um. Uh, just kind of pulls out a bunch of, uh, of like a small pouch full of pebbles. Well, pretty ain't good that at something. It. Well, that is something. You know, I used to be pretty. I'm, I'm a pretty deft hand at that kind of a slingshot myself. Oh, um, well then, that that, that. Hmm. just doesn't really know what to say to that. <laughs> he kind of pens as well. I tell you what, would you like me to give you a few pointers for it? Sure. Sure. I'll take him by and I'll give him some monk tread because slings are a monk weapon. <laughs> okay. Um. Just, all right. Uh. Go ahead. Roll me. Just a. Uh, ranged melee attack. What, what? Do you have dots or anything? Well, I my my fists are ranged melee attacks. Okay. Just, same. Yeah. Just use that. Yeah. yeah use the yeah. same. Whatever it does. Yeah. Just roll out. Oof. Three. Roll the. Heck, that one got away from me. <laughs> uh, roll two more. Oof. Okay. So, throughout your uh, training, you're not. You're a little bit um off on your game today. Just like there's a few times that you do just like off the mark. Um, there's like a little bullseye kind of like set up, um, just like around the side in in an alleyway that he's kind of like put up on the side of his house and just kind of like pegging shots at it at the moment. And, yeah. On and off, mostly off your game today. Wait, I just don't seem to have it down today. I'm sorry about that. Uh, it, it, it's okay. I'll tell you what, let's make this a little fun. I'll show you another little trick I got with this. Yeah? Sure. Tell you what, why don't you, uh, just show you a trick. Why don't you fling that rock right at me? Uh, 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 don't uh, worry, uh, son. This is a trick. I'll show it to you. <laughs> okay. And he throws the rock at you. Catch missile. <laughs> Which I automatically succeed since the yeah, max you, damage of a rock is four and my dex is beyond that. Uh, wow, you, you can catch it that quickly? Yeah, I was trained on it, you see. My master taught me some neat stuff, but to tell you the truth, and he got to Liza, what I'm particularly good at is painting. Paint, painting? Yeah, and I'm going to take out one of my nicer paintings that I've done to show it to him. This is something I've done in the past, just to... Help me get by. Oh, 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 wow. He just kind of looks at it. That looks really good. I do appreciate that, boy. And like I said, I was once a bit like you, but I found the thing I desired more than the left itself. The thing that made me drive, made me want to strive. And I'm telling you right now, boy, find that in your life and you will be content and happy. So, if your joy is rock flinging, then you be the best rock flinger you can be. Got it? And nods his head. I, I, I got it. I think I got it. <laughs> Glad you got there, son. Anyways, I'm going to go see about taking care of these undead necromancer problems for you and your family. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Maybe get your dad back to work. <laughs> thank, thank you so much for everything you've done. You too. And I'll just pat him on the head and say, you take care and make sure you take care of your parents. Nods his head. And I'll head back to the rest of the party. <laughs> By the way, Storm is a note. I realized that when I had her rage, I forgot to roll her thing. Her what? Her uh, subclass thing. Uh, yeah, that could... Should I roll it for shits and giggles just to yeah, see what would happen? Well, let's just roll it for shits and giggles. Oh, that's right. Every time you rage, random this happens. 
Um, uh, each creature within 30 feet of you must succeed on a wisdom save or see a glimpse of the creature's thoughts, learning how it plans to attack you. Okay. As a result, the creature is disadvantaged on attack rolls against you until the start next turn. Okay, thank you. So nothing would have occurred, except some mouse. Thankfully, nothing you. exploded. <laughs> the house blows up. Oopsie! I, yeah. <laughs> Well, isn't that one like everything is like pushed back? Is that one of them? Uh, if it is, just blast the door open. Yeah, necrotic damage that could have happened. I could have made spirits appear around me. Oh boy. Yeah, it doesn't really speak well for the Nick n- n- Candy being a necromancer. <laughs> oh, a brilliant light could have come from me. That would have alerted him for sure. Oh my. Uh... Uh, but uh, no, that seems fine. Um, are you making your way back to everyone? Yeah, maybe. I'm assuming we were. We said we'd meet back at the inn. I'm guessing. <laughs> yes, Candy. Uh, yeah, she would have head that way. Einar. I got my smith off. You got your smith off. Okay, Candy and Marcus, you would eventually regroup back. You would know uh, that I believe I know did say he was going towards the smith. Hi, Marcus. Hey, Candy. How did your little investigations go? I found a super, and she claps her hands, suspicious old man. Really? What was he doing? So I met him at the morgue, and so I was talking to him, trying to get some information on the corpses that may have been coming by, you know, that sort of thing. And yeah, they sort of found these like little scratches on the body and whatnot. Nothing really odd except for the fact that there was a lot of scratches all over them, so that means that something could have killed them. That would have been really bad. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. So I asked him if he would be able, willing to show me one of the corpses so I could take a look at it, and he said that, he asked me if I meant the above ground ones or the underground ones, and so I'm like, well, that's a little weird. What did you mean by above ground ones? And he started fumbling and getting weird, and I think he's hiding something. You think he bears some closer investigation? You think he might be working with the necromancer or something? I don't know, maybe. I think it definitely deserves more looking into. I'm not very sneaky, so I couldn't really do well, I'll tell you what, I'm actually pretty dang sneaky myself. Ooh, well, I was thinking maybe we should keep an eye on him and follow him and listen or something. Maybe he has contact with someone or he's dealing with something suspicious. Uh, you For know, some reason, makes... he found it necessary to chop off the heads of the bodies, but I don't think anyone's told him to do that. So he suspected everybody's coming back as dead. Oh, that's interesting because I just finished speaking to this quaint little family. Lovely boy, love a family. I have to admit, though, the, his mama told me, though, that apparently they've been attacked on the roads by undead, but the general populace don't believe it's a necromancer or don't even know about it. They just know undead are, like, attacking in the forest, preventing the people from getting out and doing their, you know, day-to-day life living. Well, that's weird. Yep, uh, I definitely think we should look into this. Well, actually, should I even come? I might sort of give away your spot. Well, for the time being, there's also someone they told us. Apparently, there's a duchess or something in town that would know a lot of info. Perhaps getting a little info from her first, but when we're done with her, I will go back at night and tail the man. Got it. Uh, he was a human, right? Was he? Yep. Good. <laughs> So he'll probably need light to see by, so I'll have something to track him by, because I don't have that uh, dark vision you have. Oh, that's right. But, you know what? If he's human, he also needs light, so, you know, he'll be able to be visible. Got it. Okay. Well, I wonder what's going on with Einar. (laughs) 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 Okay. I would like to make a note before the smith off. Einar would have tried to gather a crowd too. To oh, watch the smith off. Okay. Uh, roll me a performance. Persuasion. Because <laughs> there's nothing more exciting than watching two men beat metal. <laughs> I mean. Shit, these people are out of work. They got their own corona going on. Maybe they need some entertainment. Okay. Um, it takes you a bit, but eventually you're able to gather some people to 
watch. They they have nothing better to do, and a lot of them are kind of like miners that are out of work at the moment, and they're just kind of good data as any to make a spectacle spectacle out of it. Try and keep spirits up. What was the Smith's name? Uh, you never got his name. I would have asked him his name. Um, Gerard. Now you see, Gerard, back in my home village, this was a big deal. Perhaps after today, your village, your town, will have a new kind of festival from it. Maybe not a festival, but you give it a new I mean, so, uh, we'll see how things go. <laughs> Iron R's fired up. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, whenever you're ready. Yes, let us begin. Okay. I'll need, um, three smithing checks. All right. Oof. Oof. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Oof. Started strong. Hammers are not a specialty, though. <laughs> oh. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Um... Trying to figure out how to balance out the fact that he meets your first one. No, he loot. No, he does lose it against the first one. But then he nat twenties and then nat ones. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, to, to, to be fair, if he nat twenty, nat one, but he lost the first one. That he would lost. Per, he lost. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Throughout the competition, you you have a very good head start. Um, as he uh, as you kind of like making um uh, making this hammer, and, and you have a very good head start just designing the um handle and everything, and getting the mold ready, and everything is just ready ready to be to be just kind of like um just setting the pace. And he and he's looking over towards you, and he's and he's trying to pick things up. And as things progress, he pushes forward, trying and and just like uh, starting to to with this kind of like refinement and speed, and and just getting everything down pat, hammering it down. Everything is just going really good for him, as he's just kind of doing averagely at the moment. But then, nearing the end of the competition, something bad happens. The handle breaks, and the 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 actual um like the the hammer itself just comes clean off and there's just this loud crack and you just hear the crowd just go Ooh, as he just kind of looks over towards in the lake is creation and he's just kind of rushing to to put it back together at the moment but at, at that that point is there's not enough time as the like the someone set up a gong at the moment and it just sounds you'll just you just hear the Dish! time's up and he's just looking at his creation, and he's just like, oh. Oh. Well. I'll walk over to Andrew. Mm. It's a tough break, but it does happen. Looks like we don't even need to get the cap done. Uh, well. <laughs> Perhaps not, but... Did you feel invigorated by it? Uh, it? It definitely was. Yes. That's good. I, I noticed you looked over and took note of my craftsmanship. I had a very good start. And uh, you had a very amazing run in the middle there. But seems perhaps you weren't so patient with everything in the end. You guys are rather intimidated. But, uh, but by me? Uh, start, yes. Thought I'd pick it up. I was doing pretty well, and I think I rushed. Never rush your work. 
I think I was caught up in the heat of the moment. But fret not. I understand that you are saving that orichalcum for a rainy day, but I do plan to buy one of your weapons as well. Very well. So you're not at a complete loss here. I just wanted to compare my smithing to yours. I'll uh, offer him the hammer that I made. Yeah, you can keep this as a memento. Of loss. No, not of loss. Camaraderie. Very well. Takes the hammer and just kind of sets alongside on the counter. Wonderful. Then, uh, I grin. Perhaps you'll be the next forged in fire champion. <laughs> Perhaps so, but, uh, usually towns only really have one blacksmith. Well, while that may be, I have a feeling word might spread of this. Perhaps this will be a nice new epicenter of activity for your town. Perhaps, Perhaps not. Who knows? But regardless, I will pull out. How much gold is this going to cost me for one of the hammers? 150? Uh, what's the price of... What kind of hammer are you looking for? Is that a mole or are you looking for like a war hammer? The one-handed hammer. One-handed hammer. War. Yeah. Yeah. War hammers are... Let's see here. A standard war hammer is like five gold or something. I think so. It's 150 tacked onto the price of that. Oh. Cool. Hand over 155 gold. Hmm. Um... Okay. And he just looks over. It is 15 GP. So 106, uh, 155. 65. Oh, okay. Alright. Thank you. Good competition. Yes. We're going to, we're going to use patience a bit then. Perhaps you'll beat me next time. Perhaps so. Well, we'll have to wait till some more metal gets in. Don't want to be doing that too much while we're trying to deal with this crisis. I wouldn't worry about it. I plan to use this Warhammer to take out the problem. Very well. Uh, Candy and Marcus, uh, would you have been... Would you have gone to see Einar? Would have known that he is at the smith. I mean, probably if we heard there was a smithing competition we would go see, considering he was trying to spread okay. the word. Fair enough. You, you would see that there's a gathering outside the blacksmith, and you probably, I don't know if you would have stayed, but you see Einar and the blacksmith like having a smith off. <laughs> Probably knowing Marcus and Candy, they were probably the cheer squad for uh, Einar. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Yeah. Um, you got this! <laughs> you worked that, metal boy! <laughs> finished up the competition, and Einar's won. No. How much did the raw orichalcrum, or orichalcrum, or did I get from... You got about... Uh, 75 GP worth. Which is about... Uh, with good checks, is enough to make you one weapon. Okay. Okay. I didn't show all my smithing prowess in the smith-off. I didn't, uh... 
clearly with two tens, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, after the smith off, I'll walk over to Candy and Mark. I thank you for your words of cheer. It was kind of a spontaneous idea that I had. Didn't think anybody would pick up uh, onto it. Some we did back in our home village, or my home village, I should say. You did so well. Real impressive, my friend. It does bring up a good point, though, and I hold out the Warhammer that I bought. They have this Oriculcrum metal. It seems to be particularly strong. Candy, would you like a weapon forged from it? Ooh, I would love to. What is your preference of weapon? <laughs> Probably the giant battle axe she has on her back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like great axes. Great axe. Uh, bit of a challenge. Okay, well, I will certainly try. Perhaps, uh... I'll use Gerald's forge, because it's the only one here. <laughs> I'm sure he'd let you after such a stunning display. But anyways, did you find out anything about this necromancer we've been looking for? Unfortunately, no. I got distracted by a smith-off. But, uh, as we all know, the mines are shut down. Everybody's out of work. Yeah, I um, talked to a couple of families that have been issues with that. Uh, it was a bit strange. I, uh... I'm not fully convinced everybody here knows. Well, I can tell you for certain they don't. Apparently, the uh, idea is is that they just know there's undead in the area, but not the, it seems the average person is unaware that it's probably a necromancer involved in it. I see. Uh, meanwhile, Candy here thinks the Gravedigger seems to be a bit of a suspicious feller. Super suspicious. Is that so? Why? Well, like he mentioned, basically had a lot of slip-ups when talking to me, and I had asked if I could take a look at the sort of corpses that he had come across, and he mentioned that they're being... He asked if I meant the ones above ground or below ground, and that's really weird. Hmm. Interesting. My village had a chieftain. Does this village have a chieftain? Yeah, there's a countess up in the area around here I was told about. I was th th going to suggest that we head down there uh, as soon as you were done your little smith off. I uh, go, Gerald! Gerald! Mm, yeah, yeah. Where, where's your countess at? Uh, south of town. South of town, okay. Well, Any south. landmarks nearby? Now imagine it's Marcus points. Imagine it's that big palace surrounded by walls. <laughs> yeah, you, you see at the bottom of the room, essentially, you see that there's just like these walled off area. Um... Ah, fair point, Marcus. I apologize. I get tunnel vision sometimes. Don't worry, my twenty perception is always good to see. <laughs> Well, I suppose, Marcus, uh, or, not Marcus, uh, Gerald, is your forge open at night? Uh, yeah, I, su I suppose. I might be, may, need, need to use it later. Very well. I'll keep it up for you. I appreciate it. Perhaps we should go see this countess, then. That sounds like a humdinger of a plan to me. What is a humdinger? Well, it's a bit like a, a wooza or a, you know, a hee-haw jolly. <laughs> Einar has the most confused look on his face. Uh, probably just some <laughs> language back from my home is all. It's just, kind of just a mean word, kind of like very. Ah. 
I see. Okay. <laughs> well then, we should get going, yes? Uh, I agree. Miss Candy, you ready to get going? Yep. Well, let's go see a wonderful duchess. Okay. And I think I'm going to leave it there since there's still only three people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounds fair. At least we got something in today. We got some stuff in, indeed. Quite a bit, actually. 